Well, it is late February, and you know what that means on a lot of our trout waters, that it is almost time for the March Browns. Now, what exactly is a March Brown? Well, it's a mayfly, and they're usually some kind of brown, and they first start hatching in March. So I'm not going too far out on a limb here when I say that's probably how they got their name. Now, I found this one in Dave Hughes' 1999 Trout Flies, A Tires Reference, which this is an amazing book. Almost 500 pages. The thing is like a college textbook for fly tying. And it's got a little bit of everything. It's a how-to book, a pattern encyclopedia, got a little bit of history, and then a good bit of entomology as well. And the pattern I'm doing is a March Brown parachute. And it's a little unique in that the post isn't made out of white calf tail or something synthetic. It calls for turkey slips or brown partridge feathers. Now I realize one of the things that a lot of us like about fishing parachutes is that with the white post, it's easy for us old guys to see. And you're not gonna get that with this one. But if you need that for your parachutes, use the exact same techniques. Just tie this one with something white. So there's one in the vise, a March brown tied as a parachute. Pretty cool pattern, not a lot of materials, but uh, definitely a fun one to tie. Now I'm tying this on a size 12. It's a standard length barbless dry fly hook. Tie it on whatever size you need for the mayflies in your area. 14, 16 is probably a good choice as well. Let's catch in some brown thread. We'll take it back here to the start of the bend. And let's catch in a small little tail, just brown hackle fibers. This doesn't need to be a lot. Doesn't need to be too long either. This really isn't what's gonna make it float. I could probably gotten away with a few more fibers there, but I think we're gonna be just fine right there. So either snip or uh, bury those right there. And let's take your thread up to about a third of the way back to catch in our post. And this is where this fly is kind of unique. Dave Hughes says just turkey slips or brown partridge feather. And I'm gonna use two partridge feathers. I don't think one was enough. I think we need two here and I got them convex sides together. So what I'll do right here, I'm just gonna kind of bunch them up. See that right there? I think that's gonna, gonna work for us. And we'll catch it in and then post it up. Couple wraps, post it up. Is that gonna be high enough? I think so, it's not gonna be too high. Okay, we'll be fine right there few extra wraps to just lock this in. Now we got this mess here in the back to contend with. That's gonna work. Couple wraps. Take your thread right up here to the back. Now we're gonna lift this up and try to prop it up 90 degrees. And that's pretty close. But like any parachute, whether it's made out of partridge or a synthetic parapost, we do need to take some wraps around it going up. And this is a, the trickiest part, I think, of the parachutes, or one of them. You kind of have to grab it with each wrap so that you can pull it tight. Okay, now when you get a couple of millimeters, two or three millimeters up, let's go ahead and take our thread back down here to the hook, and we're gonna catch in our hackle. And this is just a brown dry fly hackle, one of the same feathers I use for that tail. I'm gonna catch it in just right in front of this post. You see, I've got a little bare stem. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm gonna wrap it up this post just a little bit. So we'll kind of do the same thing we did when we were making that post, just a few wraps going up. And if you didn't think you got it high enough, the first time you can take another wrap a little bit higher. Just envision we wanna get about four wraps around that post. Okay, so I think we're gonna be able to get that right there. So I'm gonna wrap it back down, and now when I get down here, I'm gonna secure this stem going forward a few wraps. Now we can just snip this off. And we'll take our thread onto the back where we're gonna catch in our, our body. Let's put a little bit of wax on here and then grab some tan dubbing. I'm gonna use a synthetic. This is actually a microfine, I think. And I like my dry flies to be a, a synthetic. It just doesn't hold as much water as say a rabbit or something natural. I mean, you could use a muskrat if you wanted, just like the, the Adams, but muskrat's not gonna be tan, it's gonna be gray. 
So this, for this fly, our best option is going to be a synthetic. There we go. That noodle's probably two, maybe two and a half inches. So I'm going to just wrap it up. After I get a couple of wraps, I might try to tighten it up just a little bit. And we're going to wrap this body all the way up in front of the, the wing post, right, till we get behind the eye. And I might have a little bit too much dubbing on here. Uh, we're going to see, I guess. Don't want it to be too fat up front, but you know what? I think we're going to be just fine. Okay, yeah, it's not a perfect looking body, but I think it's going to work. Let's go ahead and wet finish it right here. Now this part, how you do this, I don't know, kind of optional, but I think it does make it just a little bit easier if you turn this around in your vise, prop it upright a little bit, and then, of course, we're going to have to catch our thread in again before we wrap this hackle feather. So just a few wraps right here. Let me try that again. All right. It's not staying on there. I need to just do these a little bit looser, maybe. Pull a little more thread out, I guess. Here we go. And just enough wraps, I guess, to where you've really lock that thread in before we snip that tag. And now we just wrap this. Just kind of take your time right here. And, you know, I think we're gonna need maybe four wraps. We'll see what, what it looks like after we've gotten three on here. Is that gonna be enough? No, let's try to go one more. Okay, that is four full wraps. I'm gonna pull a little bit of thread out and then catch this off on this post. And how you'll wanna do this, you kinda of just have to zigzag it through here. Several wraps. And now before I snip that excess feather right there, I'm gonna go ahead and, and do my whip finish. And again, this could be a little tricky too. You just kinda of have to do the same thing you did with those wraps. Just zigzag it. You'll want to try to keep it under all these fibers. And a three or four turn should work right here. And now we just snip our thread and this excess feather right here. Now let's put it back in the vise. Let's drop it first put it back in here and see if we have any cleanup. Well, I do, because I got some traps and barbs going down right there. Don't do like I did. I mean, the fish is still gonna see that, except now I've got a couple of barbs that are gonna poke through the water. You don't really want that, so I'll probably need to trim those off. Not a beautiful fly, but I think it works, and the technique you saw right there, it's gonna work for most of your parachutes. So that's it, my friends. I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care, and we'll see you next time. Okay, everybody, thanks for sticking around. A couple of months ago, I found a copy of this book at a good price. I mean, a new one is gonna cost you $100. Used ones are still $50 to $80, but still worth every penny. So anyway, I've got an extra copy of this one to give away, and y'all know how this works. Any of you in the US, just leave a comment. We're gonna keep it simple this time. Mention book, B-O-O-K, anywhere in your comment. Let's say Saturday, it'll be March 2nd, 2024. I'll go to the random comment picker, pick a winner. So that's it, everybody. See you in a couple of days.